Hello, family, and welcome to season four, episode seven of the Good News Network. Reporting from beautiful Miami, Florida, I'm Luke Speckman. And I'm Brandon Speckman. And today we'll be chronicling just a few of the countless blessings that God has poured down on our worldwide family of churches, the International Christian Churches, this past month entitled March Gladness. Now today, we'll start off with an update on the first Southern Africa Missions Conference hosted this past month in Johannesburg, and follow that with special announcements coming from Sold Out Press International. Later, we'll see a mercy moment and a day in the life of our dear sister here in the Miami church, Melina Harrison. Then will come the always faith building good news from around the world. Finally, I'm so excited to close with very special highlights of the women's days across the globe. And so let's begin with good news from the Africanus world sector led valiantly by Dr. Andrew and Patrick Smelly. The first ever Southern Africa missions conference entitled God is Able was held in Johannesburg South Africa on March 7th through March 9th. Disciples across South Africa and the world, including 14 disciples from the Washington DC Church, the Africanist Pillar Church, joined together in worship, fellowship, and a life-changing time of learning from the scriptures as they continue to carry out their part of Operation Motherland to evangelize the 10 countries of Southern Africa. Throughout these few days, disciples experienced a delicious welcome banquet, elephant walks, cultural dances, and moving charges from guest speakers and European world sector leaders, Michael and Michelle Williamson. At the Sunday worship service, some of the highlights were the conference keynote sermon, which was delivered powerfully by Maputo Mozambique mission team leader, Yuri Oliveira, the baptism of a campus student named Akuna, the appointment of Nick Wynn as evangelist in God's kingdom, and the sending out of the Maputo mission team. Of special note, Mozambique is the first Portuguese speaking African nation to be planted, which now takes the movement into three of the 10 Southern Africa countries. Congratulations to our forceful advancing Africanus family. What an incredible victory. And now we have two special announcements from the Sold Out Press International, followed by our always encouraging Mercy Moment. Greetings from Sold Out Press International. We have two very exciting announcements. The first being the release of an audible version to one of our well-loved publishings. Dr. Tim Kernan's 2020 Book 3, 20 more convictions in 20 days for everyone who wants to get stronger and be empowered. With this audible version, you'll be able to listen to this insightful biblical teaching wherever you are in the voice of Dr. Tim Kernan himself. Alongside that, Sobe is thrilled to share that the historic articles, Revolution Through Restoration 1, 2, and 3, written by Dr. Kip McKean in 1992, 1994, 2003, respectively, have been re-edited and bound and are now available for purchase. This publishing details firsthand the miracles, the heroics, and setbacks that led to the spirit creating the Boston ICOC movement and in time, the Portland ICC movement. These articles continue to bring into the new movement scores of ICOC remnant disciples. All royalties go to the Mercy McKean Scholarship Foundation, named in honor of Kip's parents. You can now find these incredible books and add them to your personal Soapy library by going to Amazon.com and to God be all the glory. Mercy Ambassadors, Nick and Denise Bordieri here. We're excited to announce a contest for the best video submitted by you for Mercy Worldwide. The rules are simple. Create a one to two minute video highlighting our theme, which is compassion is action, and be creative, have fun, or be serious. You decide. But submit it by July 1st to me at denise at mercyww.org. Excitingly, the winner will be showcased at the ICLS conference in Chicago at the Mercy Night. We are so excited to see what you submit.
Thank you so much for that exciting Mercy moment. We are so excited for our upcoming International Day of Mercy on June 15th. This is always preceded by our International Day of Fasting for Mercy. This year, it's on June 14th. And family, now we'll turn it over to our exemplary sister, Melina Harrison, who serves alongside her amazing husband as the Sage's World Sector Administrator couple. This is a day in the life of Melina. on December 10, 1995. Last year I wasn't feeling well and um, I had a doctor appointment because I was feeling super tired and I didn't know what was wrong with my body. So they ran some tests and then uh, one day I was on my way to a Bible study and the doctor called me and said that I have cancer. And the type of cancer that I have is a rare cancer. There's no treatment for it. And so for me, it was more like, wow, God, I think this is it for me. So uh, the next day after the news, that was the most difficult day for me. I cried the whole day. The thing that was the most difficult for me was thinking about the bone and lower, that I'm not ready to leave them yet. So the type of cancer that I have, there's no specific treatment for it and the doctor don't have the answer. Usually people um, with this type of cancer just last for a few months, maybe a year. So my treatment is uh, immunotherapy right now, and I do it like every four weeks, and it has to be for a year. I already done six, uh, six treatments, so I have seven more to go. And that affects my life. Um, every day is different. Like. It is hard for me to plan a week, um, you know, or ahead of time, because I don't know how my body's gonna react after the treatment. So usually, sometimes it's pain the next day or pain, pain the, ne the, the week after. So after the diagnosis is when I made the decision to be close to God, and that's when um, God provided all these women that wanted to study the Bible and open the heart of many of them. So last year I was uh, personally fruitful three times, but I helped in total six women to become a disciple. God gives me, gives me the hope and also all the prayers from everybody. I don't know what's going to happen with my life. I know that God is with me and He's going to help me through everything. So one thing that I learned going through all of this was that even though physical pain was there all the time, God still can use me. And for me, when I think about women that need, need God, that's what gave me the strength to go after and help women to know Him and be with Him. I think that's, that's for me is something refreshing, it's something that gave me strength to keep going. Even though I don't know what's going to happen with my life in the future, I just want to give my 100%, 110% for God because He's everything for us. And He's so faithful that I know that even if I'm going through a hard time, He's always there and we have a spiritual family that is always there too. Thank you, Melina, for sharing so vulnerably about your inspiring testimony and your life as a disciple of Jesus. We're so immensely proud of your example of faith and perseverance, and so glad to have you and Devon as dynamic leaders here in the Miami Church. Let's all continue to pray for Melina's health. And now we have good news from around the world. First, an update about the upcoming AMS and Singles Leadership Seminar and the European Missions Conference. Due to the Olympics being in Paris this year in 2024, the location of these back-to-back -back conferences officially has changed from Paris, France to Barcelona, Spain. And with this change, all in attendance will not only get to experience what is sure to be two glorious conferences, but also witness the inaugural service 
for the Barcelona International Christian Church on the Sunday service on October 27th of the European Missions Conference. How exciting this is going to be. Please pray for Anthony and Cassidy almost as they direct the EMC and lead the Barcelona mission team. And speaking of the AMS, all the way in the Los Angeles church, we have the story of Kennedy, a talented actress and one of the stars of a very popular YouTube series, Darman, with over 13.9 billion views. Yes, 13.9 billion. What a joy to see that on March 24th, this prominent young woman gave her life fully to Christ and was buried in the waters of baptism as a true disciple of Jesus. Congratulations, Kennedy, and welcome to the family. Additionally, another baptism very special to the LA Church was that of Aaliyah. Aaliyah is a teen and the third generation of the Kelly family to get baptized, making this the 14th member of this very special family to become a disciple. Welcome to the kingdom, Aaliyah. And more family baptisms trumpeting from the Latin America world sector. In Mendoza, Argentina, the church recently celebrated their first year anniversary. And to the joy of all that were in attendance, they closed out their Easter Sunday service with Alfredo Jr., the son of church leaders Alfredo and Alejandra Anuch, declaring Jesus as his Lord and Savior and being baptized at 13 years old. And finally, from the tribe world sector, in their pillar church of Dallas, Texas, we have David Kernan. David Kernan, the son of Tribe World Sector leaders, Drs. Tim and Leanne Kernan, is known and loved by so many, and so heaven and earth rejoiced as he was baptized by his family Saturday, March 16th, uniting the entire four-member Kernan family in Christ. Oh, we are so happy for each of you. What a blessing to see so many physical families transformed to become spiritual families as well. Astoundingly, the European World Sector had 20 additions in the last two weeks of March. We'd like to highlight the Oxford House Church, which has a campus outreach to one of the highest ranking colleges in the world, Oxford University. There were two baptisms on Easter Sunday. A special note, Sean is a 17-year-old Hungarian and Guyanese student studying at Precision Football College in Oxford. Sean was forceful with his Bible studies, making no excuses as he left an ungodly relationship to be baptized and join the fight for souls in Oxford. Sean is fired up to make disciples in Oxford and already has two friends studying the Bible as well as his ex-girlfriend. And over in our shepherding world sector, where our movement shepherding couples continue to flourish and aid the strengthening of each and every church, the esteemed leaders of this world sector are Tony and Therese Antelon, who reside in LA, but who recently made a shepherding visit to Hilo, Hawaii, Sydney, Australia, as well as their birthplace of Guam. Amazingly, Tony and Therese were first reached out to and baptized by the ICOC mission team that came to Guam over 30 years ago. Then, years later, they were among the 25 Portland Disciples in 2003, where the Spirit sent Kip and Elena McKean. This group would grow to nearly 500 disciples and formally initiate the Sold Out Movement in 2007. The Untalans became instrumental in forming the Guam ICC Remnant Group on March 28, 2010, through Teresa's sister and her husband, John and Bernie Pareda. And so, what an absolute blessing for the Untalans to visit the Guam Church, now dynamically led by Rico and Janelle Jones, and to encourage the disciples there that they have known for years. Dr. Michael and Sharon Kirshner also made a shepherding visit all the way to India and were able to stop in New Delhi as well as Bangalore to attend their phenomenal Women's Day. We're so grateful for these wise, generous, and hardworking couples who are willing to go anywhere, do anything, and give up everything to uplift the spiritual family. So amazing. And we have a few big milestones hit in our global family this past month. On March 24th, the New York City Disciples initiated their Spanish-speaking ministry. And with 25 disciples, God gave them 52 in attendance. Wilfredo, a Columbia University student and zealous disciple, preached a fiery sermon in Spanish. Way to go, New York City. Of course, since the New York City Women's Ministry leader, G. Blackwell, is Dominican, her awesome husband, Corey, alongside G, discipled this new fast-growing ministry. And more good news from the Jerusalem Church of the Movement, the City of Angels Church in Los Angeles. During March Gladness, the Lord blessed this model church with 73 additions, 69 baptisms, and four restorations. They now stand at 1,128 disciples strong, 
with 1,300 in attendance on Sundays. Wow. Dr. Jason and Sarah Dimitri are doing a tremendous job leading this thriving congregation through their Company of Prophets program and Preachers Academy, which integrates the International College of Christian Ministries into their leadership training. Now over in Toronto, charismatically led by Evan and Kelly Bartholomew, the church had a record 12 baptisms for March and had their highest attendance ever at their Easter service with 175 souls worshiping God together. And in Latin America, specifically in Sao Paulo, the church had 31 additions in March's 31 days. That's daily additions. So awesome. The USA sector of the Latin America world sector is on fire, not only in LA, but also in San Francisco. This great congregation also reached a huge milestone as the church hit 450 sold out disciples. What a miracle, and we know God will continue to bless them as they are now on the road to 500. So amazing. Now here in the Miami church, we are so humbled to share the growth God has given. From January to March, with 46 baptisms, we've seen the church grow from 183 to 218 Disciples Strong. We love you and are so proud of you, Miami family. And our final milestone is that in the nine nations of French Africa with international Christian church congregations, the angels celebrated an astounding record harvest for March gladness of 142 additions, 137 baptisms, and five restorations. The overseeing French Africa ministry couple, Dr. Blaise and Patricia Fumba, report that the two largest churches are Kinshasa Democratic Republic of the Congo at 717 disciples and Abidjan Ivory Coast at 655 sold out members. So in total, we have almost 2,400 disciples in French so Africa. So incredible. Now, March Gladness was, without a doubt, filled with so much fantastic news. And along with that, March was also Women's History Month. And so, to close out today's episode, we want to take a few minutes to highlight the spirit working in the glorious Women's Day events hosted across the globe. First, in Sages, led passionately by Drs. Matt and Helen Sullivan, we have the awe-inspiring churches of South Asia. In the Kathmandu Nepal Church, led bravely by Earl Rigdon and Megan Matthews, the eight sisters of the Kathmandu Church and three visiting sisters welcome 67 visitors. That's seven visitors for every one disciple. They had special performances and welcomed keynote speaker Dr. Colleen Chalinar of New Delhi, who preached their theme, Treasured. And in the New Delhi church, with the same theme, God powerfully paved the way for them to have 151 in attendance with 110 visitors. The New Delhi Women's Day opened with a stunning dance performance, international prayer, and after some amazing testimonies and a lesson delivered by Colleen, they closed with a scrumptious buffet and raffle. We're looking at this incredible celebration. God is working powerfully through his treasured possession in India. And moving into Africa, in Abidjan, the sisters had their Women's Day themed, He Told Me Everything I Ever Did from John chapter 4, verse 29. Their guest speaker was Marianne Kaku, an Ivory Coast national converted in LA, who after graduation returned to Abidjan to become a full-time intern. She challenged the audience to run after a relationship with Jesus, which is the only thing that can truly satisfy us. God tremendously blessed their Women's Day as the 244 sisters had 590 in attendance and closed with eight baptisms and one restoration. So amazing. And moving over to Tana Madagascar with the same theme as Abidjan, we have quite a story to share. After many weeks of prayer, fasting, and a daily door-to-door -door evangelistic campaign to rally the Samaritan women of the city, God's glory came down in an unprecedented way. 25 sisters had 326 women in attendance. One sister, Vivienne, led the way and personally had 100 guests with her. And our dear sister, Narina, had 85 friends in attendance. Their afternoon ended with three glorious baptisms. What an incredible example of faith and hard work. Now over in the tri-world sector, led by esteemed doctors Tim and Leanne Kernan, there is the Dallas-Fort Worth Church, which had its Women's Day with over 100 in attendance. Dr. Leanne Kernan was their speaker, and they closed with two beautiful baptisms. Also in Tribe, over in Southeast Asia, the five regions of Manila hosted four different Women's Day events entitled Brand New. And indeed, many hearts were made new through God's Word. With 252 sisters, they had a cumulative attendance of 762 women. Micah Carbonell and Anna Malnegro of Manila, as well as Cielo Perez of Bangkok, were the keynote speakers for these events. 
and they had three beautiful baptisms. In the Austral China World Sector, led by spirit-filled Dr. Joe and Carrie Willis, the Sydney, Australia Church had their Women's Day themed The Power of Purity, which was located in the gorgeous Vaucluse Sydney house that was celebrated with a delightful high tea. Latin America World Sector leader Linda Moreno shared a message that moved many women's hearts. And finally, the Sisters of Sydney introduced Ndibo, a first-year medical science student at the University of Sydney. A few weeks ago, in the midst of her prayers for a deeper understanding of the Bible, Ndibo encountered the disciples and promptly attended the Bible talk that following day. Despite her religious background, Ndibo exhibited great humility in approaching the scriptures, ultimately deciding to release any prior beliefs that did not align with the teachings of the Bible and choosing to become a baptized disciple of Jesus. Her baptism before the 100 plus others in attendance served as a powerful inspiration to many women. Now over in the Promised Land World Sector, led by Coria G. Blackwell, the Sisters of Syracuse, New York, hosted their Women's Day set free. It was superb. The mighty women's ministry of the Syracuse Church, inspired by Dave and Jill Swan, and which is one of the original churches to first join the new movement, 30 sisters had over 100 in attendance and all enjoyed the skillful vocal performances and brave testimonials of those on stage. Boston Women's Ministry Leader and former Jean and staff, Alyssa Swan served as their keynote speaker, preaching a heartfelt lesson. They ended in the best way, setting free two precious souls in the waters of baptism. Now let's visit the Northern Federation World Sector, led by Dr. John and Emma Kazi. The Detroit, Michigan church celebrated their third Women's Day since their team was planted almost three years ago. Just two weeks before their Women's Day, they had only three visitors registered. And so, the Detroit women's ministry leader, Julie Clark, rallied the only 27 sisters to much prayer and fasting for God to work miracles. God blessed the sisters with a total attendance of 147 women, about five for one visitors, proving that God can do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. And additionally, just days before the event, God blessed them through the generous donation of food that fed all in attendance. God is good. Now also in the Northern Federation, in Chicago, the sisters have been marching on to victory in the month of March and their Women's Day, I Am Her, inspired, was truly unforgettable. The Lord gathered together 420 in attendance, and what they witnessed was nothing short of inspiring. The Women's Day was especially historic because the inspired vision of Emma Kazi to write and direct an entire musical aided by C.L. Pinedo as the composer of the music and Ashley Campbell as the lyricist. It was simply miraculous to watch so many gifted sisters come together to craft and put on a captivating show, along with testimonies, a keynote, and six souls plunged into the waters of baptism and raised to a new life. Let's take a look at the musical. Beautiful. All right, one final piece of Women's History Month news comes from the dynamic and talented biological and spiritual sisters in the AMS ministry of LA, Kristen Smith and Chantel Anderson. These dynamic women recently released a spiritual podcast geared toward women called Go Sis. They have been trailblazers in the AMS ministry. On March 7th, they were invited to speak at a Women's Day event at Crypto Arena, a massive arena in downtown Los Angeles. Also, in their time there, Kristen and Chantel received the Women of Impact Award from LA Kings and the Elite Network. Come on, go sis, let your bright light shine. It has indeed been a month of miracles and eternal impact all over God's kingdom in the month of March. We can't wait to see you again soon and share with you all the good news for April, which has been entitled April Fools for Christ. Please be sure to share the March Gladness episode with your friends and family so they too can marvel over what has been a spectacular month from the Lord. This is Luke and Brandon Speckman reporting to you from the Good News Network. The best news you'll ever see.